So what is the future of high-speed rail? Well, the answer is it's troubled but also exciting. We're already seeing major investments by countries like China in high-speed rail networks. In fact, you will see more high-speed kilometers of track in China, perhaps, than much of the world put together within 20 years, and much of it running at around 200 miles an hour or faster. You'll see uh, investment also in other countries like France and Spain. Spain already has a huge network of high-speed rail. And wherever you're seeing these networks open, we are, we are also seeing the death of the traditional air transport between those countries or between those hubs. So long as the cities are relatively close together, and I'm talking about 200, 300, 400 miles, those kind of short-range trips just disappear when you open a high-speed rail link between them. And we've seen that over and over again in Europe. And that's one of the reasons why European nations are so interested in high-speed rail. But there are major challenges. If we take, for instance, a country like the UK, where our high-speed rail network can hardly get up to 140 miles an hour before it has to slow down, because our cities are so close together. Take these trains behind me, these new high-speed rail links, which are running on the same tracks as the Eurostar. It's a very efficient and effective train. It's very light, very highly powered. It has to be, because it has to achieve, achieve its maximum 140 miles per hour in a few seconds or it has to start breaking again. Because it only takes minutes to go from one station to another, even across a great chunk of the UK. So that's why the very high speed of rail links that run, say, from London to, uh, to Scotland, and there are huge questions about whether it's sensible to try and get the, uh, the train to stop in a city like Birmingham, because it's just so close. Maybe it should just leap once to Manchester and then once up to Glasgow, and that's there. So these are great challenges. And of course, the great economic factor is load. How many passengers do you actually get on a train? Because if you don't get many, you'll be in difficulties competing with a very uh, highly efficient airline with high occupancy, like EasyJet, with, uh, with uh, new planes, uh, very efficient, short turnarounds, and the rest. If those trains that are running on high-speed tracks only contain 10 passengers per carriage, then you're going to make a thumping loss. The other thing we need to bear in mind when we're talking about whether trains are green or not is just how much energy we have to put into the system to create it in the first place, how much energy we have to use to maintain these tracks with these massive vibrating hunks of metal, metal chur churdling along at, a, at hundreds of miles per hour, and how much it costs to power them as well. And it's more than you think. So once again, we have to take great care to make sure that all of our transport systems are optimized in order to make rational decisions about high-speed high speed rail in the, tr in the future. And there's a further challenge. On these same tracks, there is competition from goods trains because we also want to take freight off the roads. In fact, goods trains are one of the most efficient ways to move goods around other than on water. The challenge is that to do that, you really want to trundle them along at a relatively slow speed. Speed doesn't really matter if you've got a 1,000 containers on a track over a, a couple of miles. But the issue there is that if you don't go fast with your freight, you're going to cause a traffic jam with your high-speed trains. And so optimizing a rail network means having enough passing points where freight trains can be stopped off while passenger trains zoom by. It's all complicated, it all requires investment, and it all requires very, very long-term planning. Unlike governments which plan for the next election, or companies which plan for the next quarter figures, railway networks will be in place for the next 100 years or more. And that's why we have to think very, very carefully in a strategic way about what kind of world we want for a greener future.